and Jack Murray, founder of Media HQ, which is a, a, a software distribution business focused on the media sector, and also author of this newly released book, The Magic Slice, is an expert in storytelling. And I hope that Jack can help us engage people with our ideas around culture to the benefit of organizations going forward. So welcome to the event, Jack. Uh, Jack was also part of the entrepreneur experience in the flesh a number of years ago uh, in Ballymaloo. So it's great to have you back uh, in the community. And he's an active member of the alumni community, which is, which is also wonderful. So Jack, can I throw in the ball first and ask you um, why storytelling is a great method of engaging people on topics around purpose, vision, values, all of these areas that are at the core of high performing cultures. I have a phrase that I use at the start of the book, which is great stories get more. It's the most effective way to communicate, Pete. So what do great stories get more of? Emotional engagement, uh, they get repeat business, they get more investment. Um, and the reason that they do is that they channel an emotion from one person to the other. Um, they're the best way in which to naturally communicate with someone. We live stories all day, every day. Um, the way we think is in stories, the way we think of who we are, our sense of self-worth is a story. We go to bed at nighttime and we dream in stories. So we are hardwired as individuals to communicate stories outwards and to receive stories inwards. And it's the best way in which to process information. So it's very natural then from a business perspective that if organizations want to achieve great things to follow on from what we've already heard on the session, that using stories to do that is the most effective tool. And as, uh, as a bunch of Irish people, uh, I was once told before when I went on a storytelling course that we have a natural gift and storytelling. So, so is it something that you feel actually comes quite natural to us, the art of storytelling? It is something on a social level, it's something that comes very natural to us. But in corporate environments, the stories are eradicated out of us. And there's a very good reason for this, that in corporate environments, people tend to be, outside of entrepreneurial environments, people tend to be very risk adverse. So people who want to communicate in a natural sense, and people become quite robotic and, and, and quite staid in a corporate environment. Creative people, um, which is normally entrepreneurs, are risk takers. And risk takers are creative and they're outward. So they tend to be more communicative and more story based. But in, in more staid corporate environments, people don't want to risk trying something creative. And that can kind of take the normal story, Irish story gene away. And you get towards more a debt by PowerPoint. And I know which of the two I would much rather be involved in. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Sometimes we have this, this, the, these two sides of our brains. This is the way we behave at home and in social circles. And this is the way we behave in work. And I think one of the things that I'm seeing more and more is that for people to be true to themselves and their personalities and their quirks and their uniqueness and their differences, people much prefer to see the real person. And that is the- Yeah, there's person. none of us corporate. Yeah, there's none of us drones. There's none of us robots. And like we do a thing, we do a storyteller course. And one of the things we do on it, we say to people a week out, send us a personal picture that you're willing to talk about. And amazing things happen. When we could meet face to face, every day we'd meet face to face, we'd have at least one session of tears. And I have a very vivid memory of someone coming from a large corporate and one of the executive assistants stood up and she was a Dutch lady. And she put up a gray, a gray black and white picture of her, her grandparents. And she said, this is my grandpapa and my nana. And she, she said, he worked in the coal mines to give us the life we have today. And it was a dry eye in the house. And nobody had seen this side to this woman. And she sat down and I kind of said, like, that's your A game. And sometimes it's John from accounts or Mary from acquisitions. And they're a gray suit that everybody sees. And they just blow everybody away with their narrative. And you think, well, if that's your A game, why would you be doing the PowerPoint, put people to sleep? Yeah, it's a bit like people say, people say that, 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 that people remember how they make you feel as opposed to necessarily what they say. So they say a period after event, you remember how you felt after that event, as opposed to actually what was said. Some people can't remember what was said, but they do remember leaving somewhere how they felt. And I guess story is a great way of, of engaging the emotions. 90% of bullet points are forgotten in, in, in minutes. And, but if you, if you can communicate and like, whether it's a, 
part of an investment deck or whether it's a hiring process or whether it's at an internal meeting with colleagues, if you can tell a compelling story to articulate your point, it will stay with people. Okay, so let's, yeah, as you know from being part of it, the entrepreneur experience is all about actionable insights. And this year we spoke at the event about this concept of lean is always your friend. And people were asking, who's lean? Where's lean? What's lean? And lean for me is L is for learning, for I to get insights. But if you can't put those insights into actions, they're useless. And then when you put them into actions, you need to be able to measure them. And one of the, 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 the negative things I think of a lot of the learning that goes on in people's worlds when they expose themselves to stuff is they never get the insight and they never get it to an action and it ends up being lost, right? So storytelling as a tool, we want to make sure that people who have joined us this morning are going to actually benefit from having some takeaways, right? So you have a process, a simple process um, that's in the book, which you talk about to enable people to get started on this storytelling. And I know you have six steps. Can you talk us through those six steps so we have some takeaways in terms of insights? Yeah, and I suppose my purpose in this session is that if somebody does something small, sometimes people think of storytelling as a big ad or something like that. And, and, the, and the, the, the problem is people say, oh, we need a Facebook post or we need to put something on LinkedIn. So here's the process. And, and the process is, I suppose, first of all, the magic slice are, are those two circles and where they intersect. So one circle is what you want to talk about and the other circle is what people are interested in. And where they intersect is your magic slice. And it's that wonderful place. And it doesn't matter if you're in the pub on a Friday night, if you've shared something on LinkedIn or you're communicating in a, in, a, in, a, in a presentation, you see the light going off in people's eyes and you feel it. And the magic slice is how to get you to that place. So let's go through the six steps. So the first one is, what are you trying to achieve? The most powerful and destructive question in business is, what are you trying to achieve? So what is your mis mission? What Simon Sinek calls, what is your why? If you don't know it, if your foot soldiers don't know it, if your staff don't know it, get on it today. Figure it out, figure out what your mission is and what people are trying to achieve. The second step then is, who are you talking to? Who are your audiences? I talk in the book about starting in Dubarry Shoes at the start of my career. And my boss, the marketing director, had a stack of women's magazines. And I walked in one day and I started ridiculing him for reading women's magazines. And he said, they are our customers. They buy our shoes. You better start getting your subscriptions to L and U, he said, because you need to think the way they think. So do a full stop take on your audience. Who are in your audience? What are their decision makers? Entrepreneurs and business people need to obsess about the people they are serving. And how can you find out that? So once you know your mission and you know your audiences then you can start thinking about your magic slice topics and imagine a big folder and a big folder where the dividers in the folder and the folder says my amazing stories and the the dividers in the folder are each of those are topics and i'll give you an example imagine there's a a, a new uh, bakery and what six things could they talk about well they could talk about the history of bread amazing sandwiches great um, recipes, uh, bread of the day. And each of these topics should be almost like an engine for thousands and thousands of stories. So you tune into your mission, you know your audiences, uh, you pick the topics. And the other thing with topics, you know, you can use Google Insights, you can use industry trends, you can look at core competencies within your, within your organization. And then when you've all that done, you're willing to write all that in a single paragraph and a single paragraph that captures the best of who you are, who you're trying to talk to, and the things you're trying to talk about. Um, and then you can, at that point, you can go off and write a story, or you can, uh, you, you know, you can write a LinkedIn post. And then the last, the, the, the sixth step then is like, nothing stays the same. So you, you need to twist the knobs, you need to tweak your mission, you get a new audience, yeah, a, new, a new thing comes up, and, and, and you change and you twist as you go. Um, and they're the six steps of the process uh, that people should look at of trying to apply. And I, and I do love this visual, right? Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a visual person, right? But like this little overlap here is a very small part of each of their circles. So if this is two yes. people's worlds, it's a very small part of it. So really what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that to have this right connection, it's on the right 
small part where this intersect, where this magic lies. And what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, and like if you're, look, if you're, and some, sometimes you can be massively successful and the two circles can almost become one circle. And, other, and, and other times you're banging around in the dark and they're not even touching each other. Yeah. So what you want to talk about and what people want to hear, they're, they're not even intersecting. And the, well, I the guess fallacy you, or the... Hmm. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm getting excited about it because these are moving. These are moving targets as well. As you yeah, evolve. They're always moving. Yeah, they're know? always moving and they're always dynamic. And the best, the best marketeers, the best CEOs, um, the best communicators you know, they're constantly tuning into what's happening in the environment and their audience moves or their mission moves a little or they tweak their strategy and they have to come back and they have to revisit and nothing is static. Like everything is in a state of flux. And, you know, sometimes if you're not tuned into and the magic slice gives you a framework in which to tune into the things that are moving to make sense of them. And I suppose before we finish today, it's worth saying to people, you, you understand all that. You can use it in your hiring. You can use it in your social media. People sometimes think of storytelling as in your marketing. It's not your marketing. You can use it in investment. How, how are you raising money? How are you talking to state agencies? How are you hiring people? Um, you, know, you can use it in testimonials. You can use it in user stories. You can use it internally. We run our management meetings. I have a management meeting in a couple of days. And people, we use the Amazon model where we've stopped presenting in PowerPoint. You have to produce a memo that's four to five pages. Everybody reads it in advance and we have a high level discussion about where the, where the business is at. We don't need bullet points. We need critical thinking. And that's a story driven, high performance story driven narrative. Um, and it, it works for Amazon. It's a, it's a difficult thing to execute, but it's worth, it's worth doing. And does it, because I know the last two steps of the process are once you have the statement, then getting your compelling story, but also then revising the story as your experience grows and as your business evolves and as, as, as you change. Um, in terms of that story, I think what you're saying is if it's, if, it's very, if, it's, if it's pure at the core, so if you've um, distilled it down to that magic kind of paragraph that, that actually says it, then everything should link back into it. Right. And that it's you've just simplified it for a lot of people, because I think sometimes when people produce documents on on things like culture and, 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 and sometimes people can be overwhelmed by the volume of stuff. Whereas if you can just simplify it, then it's easy for the person who's hiring to, to actually look to attract the talent that'll fit into this. Or it's easy when you're putting out a, a, a Facebook post or an Instagram post for it to align to whatever it is. But the best way to engage those people is to actually tell the story. And I guess, how do you then get people telling the story, telling their own story through the lens of something like culture? Because I think the power of engaging people is to make people feel like, you know, they're part of the culture and that story and the culture is part of them. And that becomes quite tight in terms of from a from a binding perspective so how do you get people to actually people who maybe haven't told stories in business what would you say what would you say to them first step one of the most well one of the most important things now is like we're all we're all in the vibe business like you know the news coming out this week everybody is sent back home from anybody who was out in the workplace so for small organizations this is actually good news for startups because the challenge now is you're not judged by your glass chrome and steel massive headquarters you're judged by the vibes you're sending out to the world you're judged by the channel that you're free the, the cultural channel that people are feeling and it's your staff and it's your customers and all of that the advice i'd give to people is try one small project uh, there's a great story in the book about a regional airline in Iceland called Air Iceland Connects. They had a few thousand euros for in-flight entertainment. Now, bar getting a juggler to walk down the middle of the plane, I'm not sure what they were going to do. Somebody produced a story journal, a notebook ostensibly, to go on the back of the seats. And people came out with a pen and they wrote down their holidays in analog in the books. And all the books in every seat became this document of people's experiences. And people started Instagramming them and sharing them. It cost a few thousand euros. So try and do something small. It could be a hiring initiative. It could be um, your like one really good thing to do is go back to that place on your on your site that says our story about us. 
can you write a compelling foundation story that will engage people in the project? Something that people will understand and say, look, this is what we're about. Can you have something at that? And I would go try and go back to the start, go to the mission and think, look, if we can really pour concrete here. And, and like I, I talk in the book about my journey started with my great grandfather who emigrated at 29 to America and set up a business in the West of Ireland that's still there. And 140 years, I'm talking to you about them now. So great foundation stories. And that's a good challenge for people. And everybody has one. That's 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 a lovely way to finish. It starts at the core and everybody has their core. And it's about bringing out their story. And I love the process in terms of starting with the mission and then looking at the audiences and then looking to get your to get your to get your statement and your stories. So listen, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I think a lot of our a lot of our audience can use story and can just get started. Um, and we have, as we say, the Irish have the gift of the gab. So we're, we're good at storytelling. So thanks for being with us.